Hello, this is Exters. I'm wanting to show off the interactive Ocarina of Time map that I've been working on for the past few months. And I'm going to go ahead and go through and show off the features. I don't think that everybody has discovered all of the features of this map, so I want to show how to use it and exactly what I tend to use it for. So first of all, this is a very simple Google Maps-esque. You can scroll around, you can scroll using your scroll wheel, or you can use the plus and minus, the home key takes you back to normal. If you press between child and adult over here, this toggle, you can actually view the areas differently between child and adult. And it changes if there are changes for those areas. There is also a top view toggle. I figured Paradian included top view when he made the map, so we might as well have them in this map. So, going back to the side view, because these data tabs are only available in the side view, let's go ahead and run through them. So the ROM output data tab, you have to select a scene or a room for that to show up. Now, rooms takes precedence over scenes, which take precedence over the area. Uh, so an area can be clicked, but that doesn't really do you a lot of good. Scenes, can be like, you can see which scene I'm hovering over right here. It sees I'm hovering over Dodongo's Cavern. But if I go over a room, it will go to the room instead. So if I just go to Dodongo's Cavern, it automatically picks to view the scene data. This is a dump from a program called Verbose Ocarina that pulls the data directly from the game's ROM. So this is a dump directly from the game's data with it, kind of some translations to help you understand it. For example, these are transition actors. This tells you where all of the transitions in the room are. So transition planes in Dodongo's Cavern, those are those dark planes that you walk through that load the next room and it tells you where they're located as far as their XYZ coordinates, if there's other flags, uh, their rotation is this data right here. Usually only the Y is used for actors. And then it also gives you, um, I believe this is the actor, this is the variable that's used to spawn the actor. And that's important for some actors. In the case of doors, you can see transition planes are 23, but a door is this 2E, but depending on how the variable is set, it's a different kind of door. Sometimes they will also use the rotation data. In the case of doors, it doesn't look like they do, but the X and Y rotation data, or X and Z rotation data, is commonly used in order to show uh, extra variables in order to spawn that actor in. You can also see inside of the scene data uh, where the link positions are, those are actually the entrances for the room. So in the case of Dodongo's Cavern, that would be right here. There's an entrance, and it tells you the XYZ position and the rotation, and then right at the entrance of the cavern. So those are the areas that Link can start in when he enters the scene. So now if I click a room, I'll get data on that room. So each room has various setups. In the case of Dodongo's Cavern, there's only this setup zero. Uh, at least for this room, or I believe that's across the entire scene. Setups, yeah, scene, setups are scene wide. So in the case of Dung Dungo's Cavern, we can view the actors in the scene, and there's extra information as well, like how the echo is set up, which I believe which song it's being used, things like that. Uh, that would be in the scene data, but the room data has other things as well. But mostly with the room data, what we're interested in are the actors. So we can see there's a hookshot block uh, somewhere in this room. I actually wasn't even aware that that was the case. Uh, it could be something else. Sometimes the actors are not perfectly named and you'd have to look into that actor ID. Uh, the cloud modding wiki has a lot more information and actually in some cases has better information than what this will output. So we can see rising stone actor. That would be these rising pillars. Fire keys. There's BMO spawned in. And it tells you their XYZ coordinates and again their rotation data. So there's the actor. 8A is the BMOS actor. 0401 decides the size of the BMOS, whether it's a big one, a few other things. So moving forward, the other tabs are simply pulling from this. So we can go ahead and pick whatever scene we want. So if you wanted to go to Forest Temple, we can click in. You can also search like Fire Temple and go directly to the scene. It jumps you there. And then I could pick a room if I want the Lava Bridge room, which is this main room in the Fire Temple, one of them. 
I can click that and it'll jump me right to that room, give me the information for that room. And I can toggle between each of the tags, uh, each of these tabs here, and it will tell me extra information about that room. Uh, for example, in this case, there's nothing in this room. There's actually, or the, in this case, there's no nature in the room. However, if I jump to the enemies tab, you can see there are fire keys in there. There are the fire bubbles, the skulls that jump out of the lava. And you can mouse over them and see there's the actor, there's the parameters that go into it, it's rotation data, it's position. And even if you click the details page, you can get, this is what a keys will drop. This is the drop table they use. So it tells you that's it. So that's empty, that seeds uh, ammo, basically. Those are three hearts, that's one heart, and this is a flex drop. And you can close that. You can also search for, so if I want to know all of the locations where Flying Skulls uh, fire bubbles exist throughout the whole game, I can click this search button, and it will turn up all of them. You can see it's doing the glow. You can even get that to show up if you hit highlight. That'll happen. And that's helpful when you're trying to search across the whole map. I hit highlight, I can see a lot easier where all of the icons are at. And so that shows me where all of them are on the map. Apparently there are four locations. And if I zoom in, it will actually split them off into the rooms they're in. So it looks like there's only one in this room. And then there's only one in the main room in Death Mountain Crater. And so I can do that, and I can add multiple enemies even. So I could select, I also want to know where are blue tektites. And it will give me a big listing across the whole game. Where are all the blue tektites telling me, okay, well in scene four, set up zero. Scene 4 is the Fire Temple, by the way. It will have that information. It'll even say what the setup is. So Lake Hylia setup 0, which is the child setup. If I can zoom over there, you can see that there are tektites. The tektites in this case are hanging out on the water. Once you become Adult Link, there are tektites again, as we can see right here. In fact, there's even more of them. So you can do that. You can clear them out with the X. You can hit Show All. And that will make all of them appear across the entire map. And again, if I zoom in, it will give me details on the room level rather than on the scene level. So that can be pretty helpful to tracking down any enemy. And if I click their zooms, it'll jump me right to the room where they're at. So there you go. And again, all of them have these details. Deku Babas only drop Deku Nuts. Skoltulas have quite a few things they can drop. So I'm going to hide all of those. Crate spots and boxes, same ex exact same idea. I want to know, so there's no containers in here, but if I click in here, there's a breakable pot in Link's house. And if I press the uh, search icon, I'm going to switch back to child. That's actually a little bit glitchy. You can see it says the pot's there. In fact, this looks like a mistake parody and made on the map, the map that the pot doesn't appear here. I can go ahead and if I click search there, it'll jump there. I can go to container search, and let's say I want to find all of the red rupee pots and crates in the game. Well, there you go. There they all are. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes, for example, in Kakariko Village, uh, not Kakariko Village, sometimes you'll see that there are areas where it's there during the day and the night. I guess there's not a good example here, but it'll show up twice because... You know, even it's not that there are two of them, it's that there's one there during the day, one at night. And you can see with the pots, we've actually labeled exactly where they're at. If I'm really interested, I'm in Dodongo's Cavern. I zoom. Okay, so that's that pot. That's that pot. I can hide them, and I could just click the room and go into the room, and then I could search for them here if I want those icons to go away. So that's a pretty handy feature. That'll let you locate any container that's crates, pots, boxes across the entire game. Now, the other tab is the nature tab. So I'm interested in flora. Let's go ahead and look at Lake Hylia. We can see that as child, there are a lot more lone shrubs than there are as adults, um, but there's always three grass patches or shrub patches or what they're called here. And I can actually view what is the drop table for those specific shrub patches right there and it'll tell me right here and that's based off of their actor parameters right and right here let's see if i go ahead and see there's a bug shrub right there so it has a drop but it also shows that there are bugs and that's because there's a 
there's that data right there under the parameter. If I look at the other shrubs, it's not there. That marks that it is a bug plant. And I can do the nature search. There's some built-in presets for this, bugs and fish, right? So I can see where are all the bugs and the fish in the game. It also shows grottos. Um, so it does that on a room-by-room -room basis. And I can jump over to the room if I want to. So the only location in the whole game that has these wandering bugs right here, there's two of them in that same grotto. And I can also do the shrub and rock clusters. This also shows trees. So if I hit show all, all the trees show up. Uh, and I can jump to them and uh, jump to rooms with them in there. Some trees are specifically marked if they're somewhat unique. For example, this tree, most of the trees that are alone, you can see they use drop table 11. But that tree in particular that's up on that hill, if I can find it again, uses drop table 7 uh, as an adult. If you go back to the child Hyrule field, you'd actually find the same table uses drop table 2. So that gives you all that information. Finally, the final thing that I want to show off here is the glitch database. So you can show glitches for Ocarina of Time or Ocarina of Time 3D. You just swap between the two. But it's actually kind of cool. This is using the glitch database made by Raining Chain, and it pulls in glitches from across. So you can click any of these and they're all labeled if you mouse over them and it will bring up a video showing how to perform that glitch that's at that very specific location. Right, right here, Branch GS without Boomerang. And you can see we're in Java's, Java's domain here. So. Anyway, just want to thank. Let me close that. I just want to thank uh, Paradian for making all of these maps. This has been absolutely massive. Couldn't have done this project without him. Want to thank MZX Rules for giving me the tools to do this. The uh, data extraction, no, verbose ocarina, raining chain for giving me access to his database. He is continuing to update that, and this map changes as he updates it. So that is absolutely beautiful. And everybody else who's put the effort into you know, debugging and figuring out Ocarina of Time, figuring out how to get this data, and people have compiled the lists and, you know, labeled things. I wouldn't have been able to do this project without you. So I hope you all enjoy this map. I put a lot of effort into it. Uh, I consider this essentially release. However, if there's enough interest, I will consider going back and adding features or updating broken things. I know that it's not perfect. But I hope you all enjoy it, and you have a great time using it. Thank you.